doing another behind the scenes photo mission vlog style video today where basically we bring you along and show you a behind the scenes look at how we capture photos for our Instagram or for whatever we want to use our photos for. Today we have two locations. We are saving the second location for like a nice rich deep sunset kind of look but our first location and the one that we are at right now is this beautiful road that's kind of like along the coast. We've got like all this really cool ocean and all these cool mountains. Our first shot that we're going to be trying to get is one just looking down this road with Hannah riding the bicycle. Have the nice ocean in the distance and maybe some of the mountains that you guys can't really see but there's some over there. And we're kind of just going to go down the road. I'm going to take photos the whole way down and try and mix it up and get different angles along the way. have a couple of cool options for using leading lines to draw the viewer's eyes to Hannah. Something that I can try and do here is use this road that kind of like disappears into the distance and gets smaller. I can use those as leading lines to draw the attention to Hannah. And another one that I've spoken about before is using the end of the mountain. So as the mountain gets small on the end, I can use all of that and put that behind Hannah or the bicycle or whatever I'm taking a photo of and it's just gonna draw more attention to Hannah. So that's something that I can easily do in this image to make it a little bit better. You can't always tell which angle is looking the best or you might miss something, you might just not realize something and by shooting a huge amount of different angles you give yourself more of a chance to capture that best angle and when you get back to Lightroom or whatever editing software you use you're gonna thank yourself because the photo you thought might have been the best actually might have ended up looking kind of weird for some reason and then you're gonna have so many other options you're gonna be like ah awesome I have all of these other ones that actually look better than the photo that I actually wanted to take originally It's fun to try and think of like different types of photos and not the obvious photos. I see so many people they'll come to a location and especially when there's those locations when there's more than one photographer there like you'll come to a place and there's already someone else there and everybody kind of goes to the same place and takes the same photo as everyone else and captures the most obvious photo that you can capture for that location. If you go to a place take those obvious photos because they often look really nice but then once you've got those ones kind of look around you and see what else you could capture like get creative with it like I think the most obvious photo would be being here in the road looking down that way which is the ones we were just getting now but now the next photo that I'm gonna get is actually down there behind us there's this really nice blue water and there's this like beach and there's a whole nother view here and on the side here there's a bit of a hill so I'm gonna climb up this hill go down there into the bushes a little bit and then I'm gonna get a photo looking down of Hannah riding her bike on this part of the road. And I think it's a cool way of just like adding a whole another like aspect and a whole different view to the same location. It's like a completely different photo. Often you'll be like, wow, that weird photo that I went and found was the best one of the day and no one else got that shot. So it's a pretty cool thing to do. Let's try and capture one of those now with Hannah riding past here on the bike. Nailed it. 
I just wanted to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Wondershare Uniconverter. Guys, if any of you are filmmakers, which I know a lot of you are, this is an amazing tool for you. Some of my favorite features that Wondershare Uniconverter allows you to do is you're able to screen record your screen. So if you're ever wanting to capture how you edit videos or something like that, this is the perfect program for that. Some of my other favorite features are if you're ever trying to download anything off the internet, like some YouTube videos, maybe you need some video assets, or you're trying to download music for your videos, and there isn't necessarily a download button for those things, by taking that URL, you can download all of those things so that you can use them in your videos. Not only that, one of its main features is that you can convert almost any video to any other video codec that is available. So if you guys are shooting in like, a really high pro res or something and you want to convert it into something that's more usable in Premiere so that Premiere can handle it. This is perfect for that. Or if you want to create proxy files for your edits, if you're doing really intensive edits, this is also going to work amazingly for that. I actually use this product, which is why I thought it would be cool to share it with you guys. It's something I actually believe in and something I have on my computer and I use it often. So if you guys are looking for something like this, check it out. I've got a link down in the description. So go check it out. Let's get on with the video. is our next location we have come to one of my favorite beaches in Cape Town which is called Landadno the Sun is getting really low perfect timing because what we're looking for today is like proper sunset like that last bit of golden hour and then I'm hoping we can actually shoot some more like deep sunset silhouette style stuff right now there isn't any clouds in the sky and usually when it's as clear as it is today you don't end up getting such a beautiful sunset because there's no clouds for the light to bounce off and create that nice orange look. The first photo idea that I want to try with Hannah is to try and capture like some of the particles of the sand falling like this. I think it could be really cool. It's quite like a moody interesting shot if we get Hannah to grab some of the sand and hold it like kind of in front of the lens like this. Something that I'm going to do when I'm capturing such a lot of movement like that, I want all of these little particles of sand to be quite still. I think that's going to be a cool look. So I'm going to make sure that my shutter speed is at least like 500 or above. That's going to make sure that there's not much motion blur in the sand that's falling. And it's going to make sure that the photos and that little particles of sand are going to be super crispy and sharp. I think that's going to look the best. Okay, here we go. try and incorporate something with this sarong that we got and Hannah. Something that I love doing for my photos and videos is to create like a lot of movement in them. It makes them so much more interesting and makes them look so much more like alive. So having this sarong and having Hannah using this sarong while she's like doing cool stuff on the beach is gonna make it a lot easier to get like that movement and show that movement and capture that movement. Another thing that I really like to utilize is having props. It just adds like another bit of value to the shoot. It makes it a little more interesting. It doesn't look like you just took a photo of someone that was randomly on the beach. It just creates more of like a vibe. It adds to that aesthetic that you're trying to build and like tell a bit of that story of someone being here on the beach. Okay, the light is absolutely beautiful now, so we're just shooting a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna try and use this sarong kind of like 
coming down from Hannah as a leading line and I'm gonna get it right in front of the camera and that's gonna be really cool to draw the attention to Hannah's eyes and into her face being the subject. is like actually set now so now we're gonna start shooting like silhouette -y stuff something that I like to do when shooting silhouettes is you obviously need to underexpose your subject so that the light is correctly exposed and your subject actually becomes a silhouette another thing that I like to do when I do this is because there's no detail in your subjects and they're just gonna be kind of like black I like to separate them from any background or the horizon so that they stand out against something really bright behind them like the sunset so I like to get really low, lift Hannah up off of the horizon. It's gonna make her really stand out and it's gonna like pop. It really works out and ends up looking beautiful. That's gonna be it for this video. The sun is gone, we cannot shoot anymore. It's just too dark. Um, as far as I can tell from these little tiny screens, we got some really cool photos today and I'm really happy with the outcome of the shoot. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found some of these tips useful. I hope they'll help you the next time you guys are shooting. Hope you enjoyed this video as always. If you did, hit that like. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe and I will see you guys in next week's video. Peace. Oh, 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 oh